This is a quick demonstration of why it's useful to have the Jeff containers. So um, when I'm in um, GitHub, let's say I'm interested in this repo, right? I might be new to Terraform. I might not have any prerequisites. I might have a laptop that's locked down in a corporate environment where I can't install software. Um, and this gives me a quick way to go explore the repo in Visual Studio Code or, um, or JetBrains, I think, is another option. And what this is going to do, it's going to take a couple minutes to set this up. It's going to go create a container based on the, the um, dev container files, which let me go ahead and show what those are real quick for someone watching this. A dev container, basically, I can define more stuff, but um, we just ba say basically build the Docker file that's in this directory, and that we're going to use the user dev user, so we're not running as root. And the Docker file is your usual setup, right? Just take latest Ubuntu and uh, handle, you know, ARM64 or x64, download AWS CLI, install Kube Control, install Terraform CLI. Uh, you guys had these tools used somewhere. I saw that. I don't remember where. Uh, in the in the Terraform EKS, right? We're going to need the pre-commit. I just figured if we need to run pre-commit tests. But for a pull request, that's useful to have, right? Update everything. And then because this runs in a container, uh, if you do it from a Linux host that's running Docker, so let's say, for example, that I um, SSM connect to an EC2 instance and that instance has Docker on it, I can connect to the SS to SSM through SSH through Visual Studio Code. And with that, I can go when I open the folder, it says, do you want to open this in dev container that's defined? I can say yes, it will provision the Docker image. Uh, but there are some permission problems because the folder in that case is on the local machine. It is not in some type of network share, which which um, which GitHub is handling for us, right? In code spaces, it's handling storage and the, the UIDs and group IDs are for the user that's provisioning that. But if I'm running local, I need to handle this extra stuff here to try to make sure I don't have version, I don't have conflicts in files, um, in in permissions in files. So that's how you handle that. It does take several minutes to provision this, right? It's got a couple set of things. Obviously, it's building from, from scratch. So I'm going to pause the video when that builds. Okay, so it's now installed the, it's built the Docker file, it's spun it up, it's now running Visual Studio Code in my browser. And you can see it brings up the README, you know, in the preview. So um, I will switch to Bash here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Examples, and I'm going to go to um, what job was I doing? Multi-tenancy with Teams. I want to make sure it's one that's working in uh, version five, since I'm on version five. And I can do Open Preview. And there's one to this because a couple of steps to run first. So we're going to terraform it. Obviously, this is not running with an IAM role. So because it's in GitHub, right? So I am going to have to provide credentials in this case. And I will go ahead and get my credentials ready. And I'm going to go ahead and Put my credentials in here. Obviously, I'm going to back up the screen for this part. So now that I've placed in my credentials, I can just do a Terraform apply. One more step. And this is because my account is locked to only use US East 1. And I know that we have set up the repo to use US West 2 instead of my default region. Just, I saw another pull request why that decision was made. Um, Makes sense not have to explain to people set default region, but it does cause me to make an extra little change there. So my Terraform apply is going to run. That's going to go provision everything, and that's all I had to do. I had to go click code spaces. Should have to type yes here. Um, I had to go to code space. I had to open code spaces. Right, it's here. I can also go in. Right, I obviously open this in the browser, but I can open it in Visual Studio Code or JetBrains Gateway. You know know that Jupyter Lab would really do much uh, on this since these aren't Jupyter files, but um, apparently that's supported too. And uh, once I'm done with this, I can stop it, I can delete it, I can keep it. Um, yeah, I can change machine type. It's, it 
Code Spaces works pretty well for a quick exploration, right? If I'm on an enterprise laptop that's locked down that I can't install software, which is a case for my largest client, is they provide laptops and it's painful consulting there some days um, because of the restrictions. They're not they're not unreasonable restrictions. It's just finance industry and lots of restrictions. So. Um, yeah, and this this is uh, this is a great way to explore those kind of problems, right? I, I didn't have anything to set up. I didn't have to know how to set up Terraform if I'm new to Terraform. And here we are with this completed. Um, that was it, right? I just just did code space, checked it out, pasted my credentials, did Terraform in it, Terraform apply, and done. And I've got something I can look at right now. The state file was asked about in the pull request comments. State file is going to be local on your machine. Um, the TF state, I assume that's going to be in the, yeah, it's here. Um, so it's going to be in the examples folder, not in the root. So, so there's a the state, um, this would be up to GitLab code spaces to save it. When I close this, I do decide if I want to keep it or not. Right. So obviously I don't want to check that into Git, but I can keep the code space. I can stop the code space or I can delete it. If I delete it, my files are gone. Um, expires one month after shutdown. I don't know what their policy is on, on deleting them. Um, I generally do this on EC2 instance instead of using code space. So, but I believe my minutes quit expiring. Uh, you can see the uncommitted changes. I don't think I can see them. I think I'd have to go into Visual Studio Code and see them. But, um, but once I have those, I can explore, I can decide what to do. Obviously, if I decided I want to adopt this, I would probably use Terraform Cloud Backend or S3 Backend or something to store these details. Um, thank you for watching. Hopefully we can get this into the code for people to use in the future. And this, this video is really relevant to any project, not, not just uh, this particular project. Thank you. Have a good day.